Vue is by far one of the easiest frameworks to bind data to input fields. So this is where things become interesting. So for example, we have the message property. You take a look at the data object and we have the message property, which is a simple string. And what we're doing here is we're telling it to display in the browser. We've done this before, nothing special. But the text area allows a user input. So the user may want to change one of these property values. So you take a look at the type of element. So it's a text area. Then I use the vModel directive. And then I say the value is what property I want to bind which is MSG. So we're displaying MSG and we're also making sure the MSG value appears in this text area and is bound. So that means if I update this property, it will of course update it everywhere else found in the application. How cool is that? And literally that's all that is. Vue.js takes care of the rest. Next up, let's take a look at the second example. So in the second example, I'm working with an object. So here you can see that we have your name and then I'm saying person. So this is an object now dot first name and I'm concatenating it with the person dot last name property. So now I can take a look at that person object. Again, you can see the first and last name properties. Now, the next thing is that I have two input fields. If I separate them down, you'll be able to see it a bit easier. The first input text field has person.firstName. The second input field is binding to person.lastName. Again, just using the vModel directive and just like you would with text interpolation here, you're using the exact same thing. You access the person object. I can go ahead and take a look at this now. And you will notice that when I save it, everything will refresh, but I can say John Smith. And there we go. You can clearly see the values of these properties are being bound. The next one is the select dropdown. So I'm printing out the selection property, which is simply a string. That's all it is here. And what I want to do is say when the user drops down this select, this one here, I have a few values such as dog, cat, and mouse. I can go ahead and say select dog. Now it may look like dog has been selected, but currently nothing was selected because I hadn't made this yet. It just appears by default. But if I choose it, you can see cat and mouse which is really nice. Very simple. All it's doing is it's taking the value. So dog or cat, and it's taking that value and assigning it. However, if you have an option, for example, that has a custom value attribute, it uses this. So watch, it's not going to say mouse. It's going to say value is mouse. When I select mouse, when I select mouse, it says value is mouse. So you can override what's here with whatever value you'd like with this attribute. The next one is multiple selections. So this is a bit more interesting. So let's take a look at selections. You can tell that I'm using the join method, which should give you an inkling as to what this is. You can take a look at selections and of course it's an array. If there's multiple selections, I need to be able to have multiple values. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying selections.join and then I'm simply joining it with a comma each value. And again, we have the same select dropdown with the vModel directive that binds to the selections array. And I've made sure that I've used multiple, which means that instead of having a one select dropdown, we have a multi-select form field. So now I can go ahead and say dog. And if I hold down the command key, I can select cat and you can also select mouse and again it pulls out the value attribute if you have one if you don't have a value attribute like these two then it will use the text and if you take a look at the console you will be able to find view dot selections and this gives me an array of all of the different values that i selected let's go ahead and just select dog and cat and then i'm going to say view.selections again and you can see it says dog 
and cat. Next up, we have checkboxes. So we have this checkbox here and checkboxes are Boolean. The same with radio buttons. So if you didn't want a checkbox, you can have radio buttons. To be honest with you, they do exactly the same thing, but it's up to you what style you want. However, they both produce the same value. A checkbox or a radio button, you say V model, and then I've attached the value, I bound the value to the bool property. If I scroll down, it says bool is null, which means I didn't want any default value assigned but we know that bool stands for boolean and the boolean data type just means the value is either going to be true or false on or off a naught or a one so that's exactly what we're going to get here when i click it it will give true and when i uncheck it it's going to give false because i've no longer checked it so that's all you get really with a checkbox. However, something that's really nice is the checkbox value. So again, I'm taking a look at the checkbox property and I'm binding that and you can see checkbox is an empty string. So there we go, we have checkbox. And then what I've done is I've said the input type is a checkbox, that's fine, but we do have the V model directive to say, look, I want to bind to the checkbox property but this time I've given a true and false value. So instead of it saying true when I tick it and false when I untick it, you might want some other value in there. For example, I'm on, I'm off as the false value. So let's take a look at this. If I click it, it says the true value I'm on. The false value is when I untick it, it's going to say I'm off off. Now finally you have a modifier in here or a few modifiers and we know that modifiers modify the behavior of whatever directive we're using. So what we have here with the V model directive is some modifiers. For example you have dot lazy. If you take a look at this when I scroll up you'll see that I'm using the message property again, but this one is lazy down here. This is lazy and this isn't lazy. Let's find out the difference. By default, the V model will change on input. So it basically is the input event. As soon as the user interacts with the field, inputs any information, whether it be a character, it will update straight away but lazy will only change when the input has been finished. Notice it's not changing. Can you see? That message property is the same. That message property is the same. Nothing's changed yet. So what you're going, well, we're supposed to see a change, surely. We are, but with lazy, I have to defocus off that field. You'll notice once I defocused, this value changed, this value changed, this value changed, and this value changed because they're all the message property. And that's the beauty of view. You can keep reusing these properties. You can have multiple fields linked to the same property. So that's what laziness is. And that does help performance in some cases. Sometimes you really don't need to have an input event. Next up, we have the number modifier. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm saying number type, and you know that when you typically even input, let's say a number into a field, what you will actually get is a string. Now, sometimes when a user inputs a value, you actually want a number out of it. So this is really important. So what I'm doing is I'm having an input type, which is a number input type, and I'm saying vmodel.number. So whatever the value of this field is, don't give me the string data type, give me an actual number. And this is really important. It's basically the difference between being able to do this, which is 500 plus 500, for example, and 500, and let's say the user inputs the value, and sadly, because it's a form field, it's gonna give you the string 500, and this is what you end up with, some weird random number, and things start happening in your application that mess up. So sometimes it's very important to typecast things. You all know what casting is. If you take a look at a cast, it's molding, it's changing and adapting to fit the mold. And what we're trying to do is change it from the string format into the number format, and that's typecasting. And we can do it very easily here. We don't have to write any special functions for this. You just have to say vmodel.number, and that will return the number data type. Now we are binding to the number property. So if I scroll down, you can see number is currently zero. Now, you notice some fancy stuff up here. Again, 
We've already covered this type of stuff. It is simply a JavaScript expression. The first value in my array is going to be the number, which is just there. The second part is using the type of operator. The type of operator will tell us the data type. So I'm going to say type of number. And of course, it's going to give me number. It's the number data type that we're working with here. And then we're going to say dot join. And I'm just going to join this array together. So we don't just get an ugly array printed out. I'm just going to join it together with a little hyphen. And you can see that it formats it nicely here. So now when I change this, I can change this to 500 or X amount. Now, if I take this modifier off and save it, you can go ahead and retype the value. Now notice when I took the number modifier off, it changed to string. So that's very, very important that when you're working with numbers and you want the user to input numbers, you get the number data type out so you can use it in mathematical expressions. Finally, sometimes a little bit of formatting is nice and easy. For example, this time I'm binding to a simple property called trim string. It's just an empty string and I'm displaying it here and we're using the dot trim modifier. So it's modifying the behavior of the V model directive. And in this case, what it does is it gets rid of all those extra spaces you really just don't need. But do note, it won't get rid of the spaces in between the words. But what it will do is it will get rid of the additional spaces before the string and the additional spaces after the string. Now notice when I defocus, off this input field, watch what happens. Click and immediately you can see it got rid of all those unnecessary spaces. Not the spaces between the words, but at the start and the end of the string, it just trims off any extra spaces, which does help in some cases. For example, this one, you know, I could keep adding all of these spaces and so forth, and it can be quite annoying. So using dot trim is a nice little modifier for you. And that's basically the V model directive in a nutshell. So please play around with this directive, have fun with it. And this really demonstrates why Vue.js is becoming more popular. This is one of the simplest ways to bind data to forms.